Rick, just come on up then. Hi, my name is Rick Buttram, and I'm going to stay narrowly focused on uh, the non-resident, non or outside city non-metered sewer system because I represent Oak Creek of KK. Um, just some quick numbers to go along. I know the aggregate says 85% total increase for sewer. In reality, for residents that live outside the city, um, for non-metered, that's actually 110% increase, which is a significant increase, significant increase. Using the U.S. Geological Survey data at their maximum, our neighborhood, which has 37 homes, one's being built, 81 residents, in uh, 2023, we would have used approximately, and I'm just using its, its estimated data here, uh, 2,956,500 gallons of water if we were metered. That comes out to be 0.83% of uh, the, uh, the fluent that goes into the city system. That's less than 1% and we're being asked to pay 110% increase. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say, but that's a pretty high, high amount for a very little uh, impact. And we're gravity flow down to your system, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm voicing my concern regarding this large increase in sewer and water for my property. I water my lawn five months during the summertime and you're already charging me $123 extra for the sewer that's not going in the sewer and uh, for this last year with this 85 percent increase it will increase my sewer fee uh, to a total of 227 dollars and uh, in which i'm not using during the summertime the sewer also with the water increase my total extra with this large increase will be a total of close to 400 dollars for the year and for uh, for a person that's just mainly living off of Social Security, that's really too high of an increase. And uh, the government only gave me a $55 a month increase on Social Security. And uh, with all the other increases with food and, and uh, uh, gasoline, all these things, that just doesn't cover it. And, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to have to quit watering my lawn because you're already uh, punishing me for charging me for the sewer when it's just going on the lawn. And uh, I just don't believe that uh, this is the way to go. I could see a small increase, but not an 85% increase, especially in the summer months when I'm trying to water and keep my lawn looking nice. I live in Dogwood Estates, and uh, most of the properties look nice in there. And uh, so anyway, and I already talked to my alderman over here, and I said, if you guys decide to put this 85% increase in, I'm going to have to vote you out. And uh, I hate to do that. And uh, um, I'm just uh, kind of upset over this large increase. It needs to be smaller. I'm just a private homeowner in out of county. I am class A, flat rate, non-metered sewer. The same gentleman said that 110%. Our current rate is $52.58, and it's going up to $110, which is a $57 plus increase. When I could research from January 16th to May 23, when the last rate increase, uh, it went up over that seven year span about $7. So that's a dollar a month. And so we're asking for one year to go up 60 bucks for us a month. Everything is going up, but I would ask that you spread it out over five years at least. If we're increasing that amount, that's everybody. They could spread it out, it would be appreciated. Um, we appreciate the service, but at the same time, there's got to be a balance between cost and service. I've been here now three years. And uh, I guess what, what I'd like to say is, uh, is this. First off, I have a nephew here that used to own a resort and couldn't find a person uh, to work in the resort because of the amount of money they offered. Uh, there's a lot of difficulty finding places for people of low income to, uh, to live, and now we're going to make it difficult to pay their water bill. In 2017, uh, Michigan University did a study and they found out that one in 10 people couldn't afford their water bill. 
the winter, uh, and of course that causes default, that default has to be paid for, that gets turned back on the people who can pay for their water bill, which makes it higher again. Uh, the other thing is, is I recognize um, that throughout the United States, inflation has been higher for water and sewer than it has been for any other item. However, a lot of that is due to the fact that people have kind of sat on their laurels, if you will, and not planned for the future, and now they're trying to play catch up to uh, replace all the old and antiquated uh, systems that they have. And so I would, you know, I would encourage uh, the city to, uh, to look at their planning and look at their budget and see what they've got set aside each year in order for preventing maintenance and replacement rather than catch up, if you would. Um, and the last thing is, is that while the, uh, while the percentage of inflation has been going up, most of the increases have been eight to 6%, not 85%. That doesn't bode well for, you know, what people, when people look at management of the city and they say, why, why are we going up 85%? and everybody else is going up 8 and 6%. So I would just encourage uh, the city to look a little closer at this and see if there's other alternatives. And also, uh, as the young lady pointed out here, I water my lawn too. That doesn't go in the sewer, but I'm charged for it like it does. You know, so there's a, there's a little imbalance there that I think needs to be resolved. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Fred Catcott again. I agree with the gentleman who was just up here. Uh, this should have been thought out a long time ago if there was going to be this type of a raise. This is, it's ridiculous. I mean, there are a lot of people in this town that live on Social Security. And for you that have big jobs and big money, Social Security for a lot of these people is like $1,000. $1,200 a month is what they're living on. You, you put a double the water bill and sewer bill, gas has gone up. Electric's gone up. Everything has gone up. You're going to have people eating peanut butter and jelly and beans because they can't pay their damn sewer and water bill. The cost of living goes up anywhere from 3.5% to about 7% a year. If you raised this 35 to 7% per year, people could get along with that because it's a cost of living increase because they get that in their Social Security. But they don't get 100%. Nobody gets 100% of nothing around here. It, it's, it's going to be tough on a lot of people. And if you need to pass a bond to get more money, put it up for election to the, to the people that live in this city. Vote on a new bond to cover the expenses that you need to cover and pay them over 10 or 15 years. But 100% increase on a, on a utility is way out of sight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, my name is Mike Burbank and I'm the owner of Quick Car here in Osage Beach in Camdenton. Um, I realize that the increase is relative to usage. Um, it's not, not, my, not my argument. I guess my, I wanted to come here tonight to just voice the fact that um, I've got 11 car and truck washes that use the similar amount of water located in three different states. And aggregately, as well as on a cost per car basis, Osage Beach currently stands at the most expensive of my 11 sites as it stands now. And with this increase, I'm going to go from approximately $44,000 in water and sewer bills from 2023 to anywhere from 50 to 86 percent more. I mean, that's, that's staggering. So um, I just want to come here tonight to, you know, make it be known that this is a big, this is a big jump. And I wish that you guys would, uh, you know, consider, as everybody else has said, a more staggered approach. I realize costs are going up everywhere. Inflationary, inflationary costs are crippling. Labor costs are are tough. Um, I understand that, but uh, this this is a big number. So, thank you. Thank you. My name is Jim Snyder. Excuse me. Uh, hold hold on, Jim. Hand him the mic. Yes. Hand Jim the mic. Oh, 
hold of my tent. Usually people can hear me, but okay. Uh, I previously served as an alderman a couple of times in the city and as mayor for six years. So I have a little understanding of how rate structure has always been built in the past. I tried to get a to get a complete understanding of where things were, I tried to get a copy of the water and sewer rate review that I expected had been completed and given to the board before this item one ever appeared on the agenda, but I was told there wasn't one available. So I'm not sure what the proposed rates are really based on, except vague ideas. Last year's rate increases of 11 and 13% seemed excessive at the time, but this proposed rate increase of 34 and 85% is just over the top. I've never heard of a utility with this kind of a rate increase at one time. I keep hearing how the systems are getting so old. A 20-year-old water system and a 40-year-old sewer system that are being well-maintained are not old. Systems that are old have clay and iron pipes and have been around 80 to 100 years, and cities are running them and having big expenses. We have a pretty modern water system in this town. For a little history, for anyone who hasn't been around here for the last 40 years, Back in the 80s, it was clear that this little city of 2,000 people couldn't afford to build the sewer system that was desperately needed and pay for it with just user fees. When the city asked the voters to pass the bond issue to build the sewer system, they also asked them to pass a capital improvement sales tax with a pledge that the tax money would go to pay off the bond debt and pay for future capital improvements and capital expenses of the sewer system. When 1999 rolled around, and it became very clear that a water system along with fire suppression capabilities was needed, by that time the capital improvement sales tax collections had increased quite a bit, and a lot of the sewer system debt was paid off. So again, the voters were asked to pass a water bond issue with a pledge from the city that the extra money from the CIT would go to pay off the bond debt and pay for future capital improvements and capital expenses of the water system. My understanding, all the bonds will still have two years to go, but we're already talking about eliminating the capital improvements tax from paying for those bonds. And we're also talking about eliminating them from all capital expenditures. That goes, flies in the face of all the commitments the city made to the voters on both elections. Without the sewer and water system, Osage Beach never would have seen the growth in commercial development that we have today. But the load of paying for it shouldn't fall totally on the residents. So now to just decide to use a capital improvement sales tax for other things and raise utility rates to make up the difference is only unfair but wrong. I understand the city administrator has given notice and she is leaving. My recommendation to the board would be to conduct a nationwide search for a very experienced city administrator with a lot of background in public works. Once this person is on board and dives into the job, they should be able to give the board the much needed guidance on what has to be done to get the water and sewer system straightened out and on rates under control. To change rates now without a clear grasp and understanding of what is needed would be a huge mistake. Thank you. Uh, my name's Roger Rand. I appreciate the opportunity. <coughs> excuse me, opportunity to. I appreciate the opportunity to address you. Um, the costs that that uh, we are seeing, or inflation that we're seeing, everywhere is six, eight, 10, 12 percent, and to see this type of an increase for something everybody has to have, you, you don't have any choice on it, uh, just seems ridiculous. Osage Beach also has at best, or at, at worst, a hundred homes and maybe in the thousands of homes that don't even have a resident in them a good portion of the time. They're paying year round and not even using a system. So I, I think there's some problems in 
how everything has been calculated and uh, what's happening with the costs here. Something is not right. Thank you. Thank you. Schaefer, uh, I have the Quail's Nest Motel. Right now, I'm at non-metered in-city. Uh, the rate is 738.84. With your price increase, that'll go to $1,477.68 a month. Per year, that's gonna be $17,732.16 just to flush the toilets on 56 motel rooms. I think that's a heavy-handed blow. That's all. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, Nathan Springfield. So <clears throat> my question is, the information that I've learned over the last year or so, I know <clears throat> Mrs. Woods has touched on some of where the money and stuff goes. My question is, is what I've heard, you know, that there's no maintenance crew for the sewer for maintenancing it. They fix it as it breaks, especially the pumps and things for the sewer system. Uh, pipe was installed wrong during the bypass uh, going through Osage for the interstate. It's the wrong pipe. It's a metal system, metal flex. Uh, they've scoped from Harley Davidson all the way down to Menards and found multiple issues. Uh, they have a five year plan to work this over and fix it. You know, and I've, I've heard this from Kevin who actually got fired, I think. And, you know, Mike confirmed a lot of this stuff, told me the same thing. So I'm wondering, I heard this four months ago, is this massive increase because of problems that the sewer system is having that the money needs to go towards with all the breaks and all the issues, the more smells that we smell around town, or is it just, like you said, more of a future planning issue? Thanks. Thank you very much. My name is Brad Smith. Uh, I live down in Dogwood Park. Um, my sewer and water bill right now, I pay, I use about 5,000 gallons a month. My bills are roughly $50 a month. You're already raising it 50%, it's gonna go up to around $86. Um, I, to water my yard, it's gonna cost me roughly $50 a month during the summer to just water my yard and not use the sewer at all. Thank you very much. Mayor. Good evening. Members of the board. Um, I have roots in this community. Um, Alderman Hoffman, I think my brother graduated or went to school with you. Yes. Um, I graduated with uh, Alderman Rosa's son. Um, many faces on the board I recognize. I served with Alderman Rucker uh, during my eight year tenure here as a, a board member. Uh, known Richard Ross for 20 plus years now. My concern is with the spreadsheets that we're seeing, it doesn't show the transparency of what goes into those rates. We've heard some discrepancy between percentages of what it's actually costing people. What I would encourage the board and the mayor to consider is allowing us to see the spreadsheets that are used that go into calculating these rates. It's, it's the devil in the details, as I like to say. Um, just ask you to be transparent, provide those spreadsheets. Of 23 and 24 rates um, that were used uh, in these rate increases. That allows the public to actually see what numbers were put into these rates and how they're being manipulated uh, and calculated. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? My name is Amber Randazzo. I'm a registered, I reside in Osage Beach. We rent, our landlords do not live here. They have no idea what's going on, so I show up for them and I also show up for my daughter. The rate that's increased, when we, well, is it gonna stay that way or is it gonna go back down? Because time she's old enough to get her own place, how much more is gonna be added to that? I don't ever want my daughter to feel like water or food. You, you don't want that for your kids. So it's more of a future thing. If you raise it, what our children are gonna suffer if we raise it this much this quick because it's gonna keep on raising and keep on raising. That's all I can say, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name's Dan Smith, I live in Oak Creek as well, uh, which we're unmetered, we're outside of the city limits. So that puts us at the worst place. Um, 
Obviously, you give the residents of the city a better rate. I don't know why, but you do. Uh, apparently, you know, our two-person two home can't produce enough to, to make that much difference. But uh, we support the city in our purchases, our tax money, all that stuff that, that we pay for. And I just don't feel like it's right. We're not represented here. We have nothing to say about it. And so we're basically at your beck and call because you decide to do this. I don't feel that it's right that your residents don't pay the same right, same rates. I mean, we're penalized just because we're outside of the city, but they do the same thing we do. They sit on the toilet. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's basic, but that's all I got to say. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm Doug Conway. I'm a out of city resident in Tantara Estates. Um, Ms. Woods had mentioned some things in there that I think got glossed over and I wanted to ask the board specific questions here. Looking at the 20 and 24 budget for the sewer department, we have $3.287 million coming from our fees. Multiply that by 1.85, those fees go up to six, over $6 million. We were getting funds transferred in from the CIF at $5.6 million. Where are those funds going to go when you get this additional revenue? Are you charging us more taxes or are you going to give that tax back to us? Are we reducing the CIF fund so when I go out and pay for my shirt at uh, the little outlet mall over here or uh, some other uh, uh, tax that I'm paying for my sales tax, are you taking that back now and we're not going to have to pay that? Or are you effectively taking a tax rate by diverting those funds to other things and uh, taking a tax rate increase through our uh, fees that we're paying to the uh, sewer? Our rates are going up. So it's interesting to look and hear that, that it was talked about being inflation, but it's not. You guys are diverting the funds that we're going in, uh, into the fund to another place, and you didn't tell us where that other funds. Where are those funds coming when you get that additional $3 million? Are we going to suddenly up our budget from $10 million to $13 million once these rate increases go? Or is those funds going to another capital improvement project that you haven't told us about? Thank you. Blaine, I live on Sunset Drive. And I guess my biggest concern was where this money, extra money that we get for these new rates, we had it coming from somewhere before. So where is that money going to be used? Is this something to support maybe the airport, which probably most of us residents don't use? Or is it doing something to improve parks, which maybe some of us say making some special improvements at a park, maybe we would rather our rates stay lower. So my feeling would be you supposedly have a survey coming out here in the next month or so. Why don't you put a question on there to ask the people, the residents, where they would rather see the money go. If they all say, hey, we want to see these park improvements, airport improvements, all this, and let our race go up, then fine. I'll, I'm, I'll be along with that. But I think you at least need to ask the residents what they would prefer. So I'd ask you to hold off at least until you do that survey and get some feedback with some questions on there. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? We have a public hearing. And I go on the radio on Monday, the last two Mondays, and said, I want to hear from people. The board wants to hear from people. So uh, you know, they wrote a, a bill tonight to discuss, but before they discuss it, and I know uh, many of the aldermen have been in my office telling me they've been out talking to their constituents. So I, I hope you don't feel like it's just we don't care. The reason we have this public hearing is because we do care. So we appreciate all of, all of your comments tonight. And, Hopefully you'll stick around because we'll be discussing this quite a bit more yet uh, as soon as we close public hearing. Anybody else want to say anything before we ask for a motion to close public hearing? 
All right. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Alderman Rucker. Do I have a second? Second. Alderman Morose. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.